we still do not have a Vigilance Committee report, and the chair is going to recognize Chuck Moss for the purposes of a speech for up to five minutes and forty-five seconds. Thank you. As we get close to Memorial Day, and we hear about the issues with the VA in Arizona and every, everywhere else, I'm going to skip the standard stump speech, and I want to talk a little bit about the grandfathered service of World War II. I was raised in a military family. At one point, we were, my father in the Army was stationed in Hawaii. My grandparents came out to visit a couple of times. We got a tour around the base with them to see where they used to live. And the places where my grandfather hid as he was making his way to the airfield at Pearl Harbor, during the bombing of Pearl Harbor. He was one of the few pilots to get off the ground. It wasn't quite like in the movies. They looked, he may look a lot like Ben Affleck, but they didn't really do much dog fighting as they got up there. They went up and flew around in the clouds and tried to save the planes. After uh, my grandfather passed away when I was 15, I got some more stories to him, a lot from my grandmother. My grandmother was moving a couple of years ago and I asked for some military mementos from my grandfather's service. One of the things I got was a book that talked about the air war in the Pacific. There was a picture in there of him sitting in front of, standing in front of his B-17, and the name on the plane was Tokyo Taxi. I was excited to know the name, and I hadn't done any research on conditions he actually flew, and so I started looking up that plane, and I came across a story where at that point, the military was very strict on how many missions a pilot uh, crew would fly in a plane. And the next crew after my grandfather flew in this plane, Tokyo Taxi, the plane disappeared on a mission. The family did not know for decades what happened. They did connect later with somebody who had been in a, in a plane in the same formation, and they saw that. The, the plane exploded into all the planes as they were going in on a mission. And that was a real sober reminder to me. We, the, the stories I had grown up with and heard, you, you really appreciate, and I know my grandfather was a, a bit of a rascal, I think. I uh, got in a bit of trouble taking out power to half the island as he was buzzing the Navy flyers. Thought the Army Air Corps was a better caliber of pilot. But we need to remember what we are actually asking our troops to do. What we put their, their, the troops and their families through, the sacrifices that they make. And we need to keep this in mind within Washington, not just when the VA hospital is in the news. But every day, we need to understand what we're asking of our troops and their families. I guarantee you that there are veterans that were calling the congressional offices in every state saying that they were having trouble getting care that they deserved. Before this news came out about Arizona, and yet the hearings come out when, and the, the push in Washington comes out when it's in the news. We need people in Washington that will fight for the veterans, our troops, and the American people every day, even if there's not dramatic issues in the news. We need to get regular people into Washington, not career politicians that just sit there and do it. Mark Warner has been in Washington for way too long. 
We need to send them home. Give them some time to spend with his family. We need to send regular people to Washington who will fight for you every day and not worry about the next election so much as their constituents and the people of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you all in Roanoke. I ask for your vote, and thank you all for being here.